the reason why we're doing this is because we kind of saw that like with the election and all that kind of stuff, the country is seriously divided. And we think that there's some real issues um, that are that we as individuals and as a nation just need to address, man. And we just want to see people um, come together in a way that's healthy. And so um, they, we're going to talk about all different types of issues, uh, but we're hoping that people will see the value in these different things and it'll bring people to, together instead of keeping them separated. So um, um, bring people together. Yo. <laughs> Yo, this cat is bugging right now. So, um, and it's not just us, but Rand, y'all are going to see Randall on here. Y'all have seen Randall before. Y'all are going to see Bethany on here. Y'all are going to see other guests or what have you that we're going to have. This is just the start. Me and Paul were available, so we said, yo, we're going to start it up today. All right, so first things first, yo, Paul, what, we talking about the year 2016. A lot of people are saying that, like, 2016 has been one of the craziest years that they've seen since they've been alive. Um, what are your thoughts on the year 2016? What impacted you? What what reflections do you have? Um, did you go through anything? Was it good for you? Was it bad for you? Like, let us know the good, the bad, the ugly, etc. Mm. Yeah, 2016 was, uh, I don't know if it was crazy, but it was an interesting year for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, just personally for me, I would say it was kind of uh, an awakening, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, especially to the, to the political scene and just mm-hmm. to politics in general. Mm-hmm. It's been kind of, uh, for me, it was just a time of, learning and uh, really understanding, starting to understand how the world works and how government functions and all those kind of things. Mm. And of course, I mean, this is the first time we talked since Trump was... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We haven't talked since, <laughs> Yeah, we haven't talked since, since then. that, right? <laughs> so on top of that, you know, with uh, the Trump election, that whole thing was just a crazy, just circus show and just... I was just listening to a podcast today talking about how pretty much his entire campaign was just like a big distraction, mm. like just distracting the mm. media, distracting, you know, mm. everybody from like the real issues mm. and just kind of made everything feel convoluted and everything mm. like that. Um, and so, yeah, for me, that's that's the first thing I would say. It was mm-hmm. a matter of me kind of just in a way, getting out of my shell, you know, even just doing something like this, Mm -hmm. it's not really something I would have done before. And uh, just, you know, listening and learning about, um, you know, life and uh, just life outside of myself, Mm -hmm. you know, before I was just kind of focused on just, you know, trying to make it, trying to improve my life and trying to, you know, scraps, yeah, (laughs) scraps that you could. Yeah, pretty pretty much. much. And so I think I've become a little more I'm starting to become a little more socially aware, Mm -hmm. I would say, Mm -hmm. and uh, just starting to think Mm -hmm. about, um, you know, the impact of uh, policy and those kind of things. So why do you think that is like, why do you think, why do you think that this election uh, of 2016 that went down in 2016, why, what is it about 2016, 2016 that moved you into feeling like you should understand a little bit more um, politically? Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just getting older, and mm-hmm. that's just what you do when you get older. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I turned 30, so that could be a... Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's just a coincidence, but... Uh, Congratulations. And, uh, you know, it kind of started before, not mm-hmm. just with the election, but with the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter movement mm-hmm. and all true those that, things that, that were going that, on last year, that. all the shootings. You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of when we really started talking mm-hmm. um, about these issues. And so, I think just... You know, just kind of thinking about all those things, thinking about trying to figure out what I could do, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, like what impact we could have, you know, what kind of tools do we have at our disposal that, you know, we can use to kind of impact the world mm-hmm. around us, not necessarily the entire world, but mm-hmm. just our community, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. the people that are, mm-hmm. are in our sphere of influence, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And so, and the dope thing is that a lot of the like I know a few of the people who are watching right now, I'm blessed to actually have uh, a following on Instagram where a large majority of people are people who actually want to have some sort of impact on the world and impact on the daily lives of people. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully this type of discussion uh, can help for like just get the gears going in their own minds as far as like little things that they can do on their own, um, you know, with other people or individually uh, that can help them make the impact that they want to have. Um, in their own unique way, hopefully. Yeah. 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 Anything else that stood out for you for 2016? 
Um, that's a lot, but yeah. uh, there's a lot more. Yo. But I'll let you go, and then I'll just bro. So I so I want y'all to just man, you can't, probably can't even see because it's like 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 the um the uh the lighting, but so so a few things come to mind, right? So one of the things that I wrote out first is deaths, right? That was one of the main things that came to mind. Yeah. We we saw a lot of death in 2016 and death of key figures, right? So yeah. these are just a few of the names that I listed out because they I know there were others, even like the lady who from Star Wars or what have you, but these are just yeah. the ones that kind of I can think of like these are people that I actually used to pay attention to right. over the years. Right. So Muhammad Ali, mm-hmm. right? Um Prince Right, both of us were musicians or what have you, so yeah. understanding the musicality that Prince brought to the table, right? Kimbo Slice, right? I remember, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember, um, I don't remember if it was after, when, if it was when I was in law school, if this was when I was in college, but going on YouTube um, and seeing, um, I see you, Michael. I see, yeah, Mike, I got an essay, Mike. I got an essay. <laughs> So I remember Kimbo Slice and watching his street fights against this other random dudes in the street, right? Yeah. And everybody, like, he was just a phenom. Um, and then to find out that, you know, this person who you look at as big and strong and allegedly healthy, mm-hmm. but now he passes away. Yeah. And then one of the ones that hit me the most probably was Craig Sager. Yeah. Um, because yeah. Craig Sager, man, just when I think about the impact that he has, here, here you're talking about in a, in a time where... Our country is going through. Um, our country is going through all of this volatility. Uh, blacks versus whites, um, you know, just just yeah. at each other's throats. And here you had a man who was a white man, but he kind of was able to operate within a black dominated, at least right now in current day and age, a black dominated sport. Uh-huh. And 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 he 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 was able to relate to everybody. Like everybody felt warm and friendly toward him and he was warm and friendly toward everybody else man yeah. and and not only that but his willingness and his ability to remain uniquely himself to bring his own flavor right. to the yeah. table that didn't look like anybody else's or what have you and then to see um that he was go um yes nat natalie cole also absolutely yeah uh-huh. that that's another one too and that was so unexpected because i did she's another person who's not like she's like um, really old or anything like like that that you would be expecting her to die of old age or something like that. Right. So to see her pass, to see all these people pass away, and to see somebody like a Craig Saker or like a Natalie Cole pass away, like like th- that was crazy. But then I also thought about yeah. this summer when my grandmother died, yeah. right? And and um, I was able to at least a couple of she lives in Michigan, I live out here in the DC this, the DC area, you know. But she passed away this summer. You know, but the beautiful aspect of that is that it actually brought the whole family together. Cousins that I hadn't seen in years, other family members I hadn't seen in years, we all came together. And she was, you know, she was elderly, you know, so it's not like she died tragically or what have you. But still, yeah. like, just death, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Death. Oh, um, and I'm glad you brought it up. Even Alan Thick, I'm like, yo, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, I yo, he's not even that old in my opinion either. Yeah, he's You know, not. a good dude, but, yeah, no. but he passed away, so... All of these dudes. Um, other negative things about 2016, we, and just for for anybody who might just be joining in, we're just talking about just the 2016 stuff right now. But I thought about um, it Aleppo. Have to be negative, right, right? And I have some but, positive stuff yeah. too, right? Yeah, Dwayne, uh, Dewan. I mentioned Prince earlier too, Dewan. Mm-hmm. But Aleppo, like, as I've paid attention to what's going on in Syria and what's going down in Aleppo, I'm just like, yo, how? How have we as human beings gotten to this point where, like, we could care less about other human beings, it seems like? Like, we're just, yeah. not, when I say we, I'm not saying, like, we, but other human beings are bombing the mess out of other human beings right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's just crazy. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that, Dewan. Trust me. <laughs> we're going to get to that. <laughs> um, I also thought about the nearly 800 homicides in Chicago. Like... Mm. That's crazy. Last year, I was living in the Baltimore area, and there was something somewhere around like 300-something um, um, homicides. Uh-huh. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. So then to all of a sudden see, to see Chicago with almost 800, hom- like that's just homicides. Yeah. We ain't even talking about the people who got, you know, um, who experienced violence but didn't die. You know right. what I'm saying? Just homicides, 800. So that was crazy. 
um, the the shooting of the gay club down there in Orlando. Mm-hmm. You know, that was unfortunate to see that, you know, we, we still live in a country to where when we disagree with a, a group of people, we, we, we enact violence against them. Um, all these, all these things, man. So that that was on the negative end, right? We, of course, the Trump, the election, um, and you know, for 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 many, for I guess for those who won, it was a positive, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> but for those of us who 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 lost, you know, some of us took it well. Like some of us understand, like yo, life goes on, and we gonna make ha- happen what we gonna make happen. But yo, a lot of people took it. It was rough. The entire process was a negative, though, man. Like, yeah, just that's true. The entire that's election true. cycle was that's just. True. Complete negative, no matter how it turned out. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because ultimately, you got to remember, it ultimately came down to like eighty thousand, a hundred thousand votes mm-hmm. in a couple of states. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And the election would have turned out differently. Mm-hmm. But it's just so crazy how like the narrative completely changes mm-hmm. depending on the result. Mm-hmm. Like we see that even in sports too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if somebody hits a last second shot, you know they'll talk about. Uh, the team won right. because of rebounding or because even of things like that. Even if it was like a that. bad shot. <laughs> yeah, even if it was a bad shot. But, you know, things can just turn on, you know, minor mm-hmm. minor things. But mm-hmm. just the narrative completely changed. Yeah. You know, the Republican Party, you know, when everybody thought Clinton was going to win, it was like the Republican Party was falling apart. Like mm-hmm. they had, you know, after all these these years of just not doing anything, like they had to figure out. Mm-hmm. You know, they have to go back and figure out who they are, their identity, and all those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And now, all of a sudden, people are talking about, you know, the working class mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. they've been overlooked mm-hmm. and all those kind of things. And mm-hmm. how people from, you know, the Northeast mm-hmm. and the cities, they don't relate to, you know, the working class, middle of America, and all those kind of things. So, mm-hmm. it's just interesting how the narrative has been completely shifted just by... A couple thousand votes. You know and, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and we see you, Mike, with the, um, you know, as, as far as uh, just the ignorance or right. what have you. Like, and I think, Paul, you're, you're, you're kind of touching on that a little bit. But I think I think we as a nation showed how ignorant we as, on a whole are about our political process, period. Yeah. Um, you know, so and, and, and how important it is for us to start learning, not just on the national level, but on the local level. And as a matter of fact, for the past couple of months, I've been trying to get a understanding of, okay, what's happening on the local level of politics in my area? And mm-hmm. it's so crazy because once you start trying to figure that out, you start realizing it's very hard to find out what's happening locally right. in your, you right. know, in your actual area politically, man. So, um, so, so certainly the election and just the just the hate and the vitriol that you started to see like like it wasn't just about people um, disagreeing with one another during the election season right yeah. but it was people beginning to dehumanize other people and then I, I actually wrote it down here too in my essay Mike right I wrote <laughs> down um, how after the election the way that the winning team conducted itself, toward those who had lost. Mm. Um, but then my challenge was also to the ones who had lost, those of us who had lost, because in many ways I believe that if we had won, we would have also had a gloating kind of spirit toward those who lost, right? Because yeah. it was just, that was just the nature of the election, period, man. So yeah. um, so just a, a, a lot of negativity. Lot. And, then a, and then a campaign that was run kind of based on the fear of people right. and based <clears throat> on dehumanizing people and, and talking about people as if they're, they're just like nothing, like as if they're just n- nuisances to be put up with, you know, um, I just thought it was just pretty nasty. And then we didn't even talk about hacking from other countries or what have you. you yeah, know that's so saying? crazy, man, when you think about it. 2016 been crazy. Yeah, another country can hack been crazy. your election process mm-hmm. and ultimately... I don't know how much it influenced it, but mm-hmm. influenced your election process. Mm-hmm. And really nothing has happened. You know what I'm saying? Like there's mm-hmm. been really no repercussions mm-hmm. to this point mm-hmm. on Russia for that. Yeah. And even the way Trump is talking, like he's trying to downplay it and, you know, act like it's not a big deal mm-hmm. and lots of, you know, all those mm-hmm. kind of things. But yeah, man. Yeah, it's so, a crazy world, man. So we go on transition real quick. So we, we, we kinda summed up what our twenty sixteen has been like and what I want to do now is I want to kind of forecast for the future, like 
what do you what are you seeing up and coming in the in 2017 mm -hmm. what are, maybe on a national level what are you expecting to happen but what are also your, your personal expectations as far as for yourself do you have anything that you're working on anything that you want to see happen for yourself etc cetera, etc cetera. oh my my bad last thing for 2016 <laughs> yeah i almost forgot i can't forget this but but i was you know the lord has blessed me mm. with a um a particular particular mm. a young lady oh come on mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm. um and we know that a a man that findeth a wife mm. <laughs> findeth a good thing man mm. so um god blessed me with an, an amazing girlfriend man so um i just had to certainly put that out there yes um yes, yes, and we're praying yes. for our we're praying for our brothers who are still looking yeah we're praying, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we're praying for our brothers that are still looking you know what i'm saying like yes, we, yes. we 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 praying for y'all bro and our homegirls i feel you mike i feel you i feel you we don't worry bro we <laughs> we got you in our prayers man we oh, we man. we on the lookout for you too bro don't worry so um um, so yeah, man. So so yeah. so hit us with what, with your um. <laughs> you know, we going fast for you, mate. <laughs> I think he got cut off, but we going fast for him. But um, yeah, man. What are you thinking as far as um, um. Twenty seventeen. What is it looking like for you? Like, what are you, what are you thinking? I mean, personally, uh, I'm just looking forward to growing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's kind of been my mantra for a little while now, mm -hmm. and um, you know, that's kind of the journey that we've mm -hmm. been on together and uh i just want to learn you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying learn about myself you know learn about the world um you know develop a closer relationship to christ of mm -hmm. course and um you know just grow you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying i'm trying to you know recently i've been doing like let me ask you real quick let me yeah. sorry to cut you off yeah, what I mean, what i was talking <laughs> let the let the people know and the people is only Mike right now. <laughs> well, we thank you for. I think it's only Mike. If it is Mike, we thank you for hanging in with us, bro. Um, Where Vlad go? Uh, you know Vlad ain't staying. <laughs> but but let the people know what what is it that you're actually working on right now? Oh, I and mean, we forgetting all about our people on YouTube also. But but what oh, yeah. exactly? Because everybody doesn't necessarily know what. Oh, I gotta talk about that real quick too. But I'll talk about that after. What, <laughs> what, what is on your plate right now? Uh, I mean, the two main things are. Uh, I'm working at uh, Sligo Church. So, mm -hmm. uh, As, yo man, <laughs> choral conductor, organist. Uh, so I handle a lot of a lot of the music there. Okay. And then uh, I do the same thing. I'm mm -hmm. assistant director of music at a Presbyterian mm -hmm. church. Uh, here in Maryland and Gaithersburg, mm -hmm. uh, and so those are kind of the main so things. So you're I a full-time musician. Yeah, full-time musician. Mm -hmm. And then on the side, you know, I got Zamar Music Group that I do with Jeff, mm -hmm. Jeff and Darnell and Dre. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So we got some music that we're looking forward to releasing mm -hmm. this year, producing some tracks and those kind of things. And then uh, on top of that, I one of the goals that I was about to say uh, for me this year personally is just to be able to write more so mm -hmm. to write more music to compose more you know i'm trying to get into like film scoring and those kind of mm -hmm. things so keep going um, i'm just checking something yeah so that's those are one of the goals for me personally um you know get into more writing you know some of the music that interests me and that really moves me and um as well as kind of developing you know what we're doing here with bridge nation in mm -hmm. terms of uh you know writing doing these podcast things mm -hmm. and just kind of you know, educating, developing kind of a thought platform, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, where people can kind of just discuss these kind of issues that are, you know, important to us. That but we hold up, but aren't you in school? Yeah. Tell See, you, I got let, messed up. So let I the people know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got messed let up. Let the people it. know. So what are you in school for? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you what type of degree are you working on? What level? Yeah, so I'm doing a, on? I started a doctorate, and so it's a doctorate in worship studies, mm -hmm. and so I'm studying down in, uh, well, the school is based in Florida, it's the Institute for Worship Studies, and so I'm just, you know, kind of studying theology of music, not music, but theology of worship, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of the history of Christian worship and those kind of things, and, you know, developing my understanding, kind of a deeper understanding, biblical understanding for mm -hmm how to do worship well, effectively, you know, more mm -hmm. meaningful, more engaging, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm doing that too <laughs> on yeah, top man. of everything else, man. So, um, yeah. Well, this kind of goes back for me back to 2016 a little bit, mm -hmm. but also jumps over into 2017 
um, or, or I want to see myself progress in this in 2017. And that is really um, stepping more um, or, or enhancing my pastoral, my pastoral um, work a bit more. Hmm. Um, you know, shout out to Dr. Hill, who brought me in as part of his pastoral staff You're as an assistant again. pastor. Um, I think the camera, let me, hold on, folks. Let me just restart our YouTube camera real quick. Hmm. Got too many cameras running, man. That's the problem. So, yeah, as I was saying, the, 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 um, yeah, last year was a good year, man. Shout out to Dr. Hill, who brought me onto his pastoral staff as a, as an assistant hmm. pastor. Um, and that was an amazing year. I learned a lot. I learned, you know, similar to, I guess, any leader, like you go into something thinking like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, or what have you. But then you kind of, once you jump into it, you start realizing like what's practical for you to really try to accomplish mm -hmm. what might not be as practical, um, you know, what, what, how to get things done or what have you. And so this year, now that I have that year under my belt, um, I really want to start doing some work, doing some things that are really going to move the particular church that I'm over to move it into a position where it's able to be um, as stable as possible so that, you know, myself and the head pastor, we're not going to be there forever um, yeah. simply because it's we're just not from that area originally. Right. And that's not an area where we're going to settle down for life. I mean, he's going to retire soon. So ain't nobody going to settle down. Man. Yeah, it's, it's rough, you know, it's <laughs> real rural. So, so one of the things is, is how do we set up, um, how do we set up a, a system hmm. that will allow the church after we've left to continue and progress forward and to remain stable um, even in our absence or even if another leader should come in there, they'll have a stable platform to work um, uh, based on, you know, because right. um, it's, a, it's a pretty small church. And sometimes with small churches, you just don't have the strong leadership across the board that larger churches have. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to. Um, also, one of the challenges for me, I forgot to mention this also, is that in 2016, I wasn't working for half of 2016. So I was working at one job. And it was a contract position, and it ended in June. Now, when it ended in June, I kind of had to start looking all over again. And y'all know how the job market is out there for a lot of y'all. Like, mm -hmm. like, it's it's a tough job market right now still. So I've been looking and looking and looking. But the great thing about it is that I learned new skills because I didn't have the jobs. Like, mm -hmm. not having the job actually forced me to learn what are the what are the current. Um, resume writing and interviewing skills for 2016. So a lot of people are still operating on resume writing and interviewing based on a, t uh, 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 prior to 2008 kind of model, right? Mm -hmm. Not understanding that, you know, with all the changes that we've gone through in the past, what is that, eight years, um, if you're going to really allow yourself to stand out as far as getting employment, you, th there are different ways that you kind of want to go about it. Th the principles are still the same, but how you get those things, get the ball rolling in that direction um, has to change. And as I studied this, I started seeing that I was having more success as far as getting my resume in front of the right people. A and one of the things that happened is I figured out what kind of jobs I should be applying to in the first place, right? right, right. One of the challenges that I had before is I was like, yo, I don't even know what type of job I would want to work. You know, but now I've kind of gotten very clear on what my experience is, what my skills, um, and what my interests lend themselves to. And I've also gotten good at resume writing, and I've also gotten good at interviewing. So I've made it pretty far in the process as far as a number of um, companies, and it looks like I should land one of those uh, pretty shortly, man. So, nice. you know, we're still praying about it or what have you, but, but I, if anything I can say is that I interviewed real well. You know, like, like they was like, yo, we got to at least consider you, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying, I'm trying to help these folks out here. So, um, that's so, so that's been good, man. So I'm looking forward to see what it looks like when I actually get into a position that allows me to bring my whole self to the table, yeah. um, in 2017, man. So, um, and other than that, one of the other major things is doing stuff like this, like really using the tools and the technology. You mentioned this, the technology that's at our fingertips, mm -hmm. uh, and using it to hold these discussions that I think will be informative 
to various different groups of people, man, all in hopes that it'll help bring people together. And when I say bring people together, I don't just mean like everybody holding hands singing Kumbaya, right? Mm -hmm. But just simple stuff like maybe it'll you'll hear something that helps you to know what kind of uh, field of work you want to go into or helps you to just think a bit more about your place in the society and, and or, or an event might happen and how do you think about that within the context of your own personal life you know it might right. just it might be something as simple as something that happened in sports mm -hmm. but you might be able to take something from that sport or something that you know an event that went down or or maybe somebody did something in hip-hop um, that you can pull or draw something from that means something for the culture of today or for you as an individual man so those mm -hmm. are really my focuses uh, oh matter of fact this is the word that i would use and mike oh you would appreciate this bro but um I, one of the words that i think are gonna define this year for me i'm sorry man paul jump in whenever you want man you know i i can't help yeah. but steal the show sometimes but Gladly, <laughs> on, on and on, man. one word is minimalism right mm. so i actually happen to be doing a devotion right now that's based on minimalism and then What's crazy is that I actually had happened to be surfing through Netflix and found a documentary on these two dudes that decided that they were going to be minimalists and really understand the concept of not getting yourself too bogged down with a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Right. Because, um, um, yeah, I see you, Mike, because one thing that I realized is that one thing that creates worry in us most of the time is that. Yo, we have so many possessions that we have to worry about. And then we have to worry about how we're going to go and get those possessions because we want them so bad. Mm -hmm. But really, and, and minimalism isn't about not getting things that you like or what have you, right? But minimalism is about saying, okay, what are the things that I really value? What are the things that I that I truly not only want, but I think I'll actually put to some good use, right. you know, um, and, and going after those things. And not getting just too much to where you just have an excess and mm -hmm. your life is bogged down and cluttered because of excess. And then I would say that the other word that I'm using for 2017 is the word creative mm -hmm. um, and creativity. And I think a, a lot of us, we don't live with creativity, man. Like a lot of us, we just kind of go through the humdrum of life, not understanding that. And I, Seth Golden would kind of talk about stuff like this. Y'all yeah. should read his book. Matter of fact, we might yeah. make that one of the recommendations in a couple of minutes. But um. Uh, living life with creativity in such a way that means that like yo, when you go to your job, can you go and do your job in such a way that you bring your own unique creativity to the table, whether that unique creativity is your the skills that you have or the um, you know, the um, uh, it just blew my <laughs> mind, right? But just the yeah. resources that you have, right. um, Even your personality, yeah, your personality, like, yeah, like. Take ownership and just make things your own. <laughs> Be creative, man. Yeah. I feel you, Mike. Dap it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, um, the book, well, what you talking about? The book is called Lynchpin. Yeah. 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 And, Get that uh, book by Seth Golden. S-E-T-H. G O I I guess we'll just transition into our recommendations right now anyway yeah. as we get ready to wrap this but, thing up. Uh, man. Yeah, the word is indispensable, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And how do you mm -hmm. Essentially, how do you become indispensable? Mm -hmm. No matter if you're working for a company or you're working mm -hmm. for yourself, you mm -hmm. know, how do you mm -hmm. kind of develop yourself and or your maybe skills? you're not even working. Maybe it's just your relationship with a family member or whatever right. within the right. family. And uh, just how do you bring all your, like you said, your unique? Because everybody's unique, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And especially in this space that we're in, the artistic space, yeah. you know, the music and those kind of things. You know, that's kind of crowded. Yeah, it's crowded, crowded, but there's there's also room for everybody almost. True. You know what I'm saying? True. Or there's at least there's room for different perspectives because everybody is unique. You but know there's saying? room. W well, if you allow the u your uniqueness to come to the forefront, right? If you don't try and right, if just you copycat into, somebody else, essentially, is what you're saying. It, because in essence, it's the same thing like when applying for a job right now, right? So a bunch of people have gone out and gotten. Uh, bachelor's degrees now and a bunch of people have gone out and gotten master's right. degree now right me being one of them now you're working on your PhD right now so but the challenge is that so many people have degrees now and it's like okay well what do you do that makes stand you stand out, out? Yeah, and stand that's out. what that's what we mean really by creativity and not just any type of creativity right because one of the things that I found for myself was that I was trying to um, even when I first started doing motivational speaking, I was trying to beat other people, right? Because it seemed like what they were doing worked for them. Yeah. And I see it now where a lot of people are trying to like copycat off of other people. And there's a time for copycatting, right? As you're learning, mm -hmm. but there's an, a time where eventually you have to figure out like, yo, what is it that thing that makes me uniquely me? Yeah, you have to find And how own. do I bring that 
to the table in whatever circumstance it is that I'm, that you know, that I'm participating in. Man. Yeah, so to find yeah. your own voice, essentially. Yeah. Find your own voice. Absolutely. And, uh, but yeah, so Seth Godin, that would be one of the things. Mm-hmm. Um, so other, any other, what other recommendation would you make? I see you, Hugh. I see you, Hugh. My cousin, Hugh. Shout out. Well, kind of um, going back Who else I see out there? Sarah, is that? LaSara. I see you, LaSara. And uh, Jack, uh, D. Jackson. I see you. I'm with, I see y'all. I see all of y'all. Hmm. So other recommendations. We're, we're getting ready to close this thing out, y'all, but we're just making some recommendations, um, things that y'all might be interested in uh, as we go into 2017, uh, for some books to read or just content to watch on t- television or what have you. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh, well, before we get getting into specifics, mm-hmm. the one thing I would say, even for me, what I'm going to do, and you mentioned mm-hmm. it before, is just kind of learn more about local politics. True you know that. what I'm saying? True one of the that. things that I that kind of opened my eyes about this mm-hmm. entire election process this last year is just how disproportionate, just how disproportionately people pay attention to and really care about like presidential election mm-hmm. versus local, local politics, yeah, you know, yeah. state. Even congressional politics, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When those potentially have more impact on your day to day life, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I'll say this is that, is, yo, Randall, we see you, man. You're supposed to be here with us, man. Randall. We see you, bro. We see you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, um, one of the things that I would say is we'll try in the future, as in future weeks come by, we'll also try to make sure that. If we can find resources that'll help you get involved in some of this stuff, like let's say if we figure out how to mm-hmm. get more involved in your local uh, p- politics or what have you, understand what's going on there, then we'll try to share that with you. And please feel free if you have any ideas as far as how people can figure out what's going on on a local level politically um, in their area. Feel free to like y'all are already following me on Instagram, so feel free to share on there, or feel free to um, yeah. to um, hit us up on the Bridge Nation. Uh, on um, Facebook, our Facebook page, and um, like there and, and share whatever it is that you, whatever it is that you have to offer, man. Uh, for sure, like anything will be appreciated. We want to be this a whole community where we all grow together. So yeah, continue my bad. Yeah, yeah, no. So that's for me. That's going to be one of the things that I kind of, you know, spent some time on this year. Um, just kind of getting into more local politics. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of understanding more of the issues, um, you know, policies and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And uh, just kind of pay, paying more attention to that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because those are really the people who really impact you on a daily basis, mm-hmm. you know. And even, uh, what's his name, Bernie Sanders, even that's what he was saying, you know, mm-hmm. you know, to his followers, you know, when he lost, he was like, you know, get involved in your, you know, local school board, mm-hmm. and, you know, get involved in mm-hmm. the, you know, local politics and those kind of things. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's going to take grassroots efforts, you yeah. know what I'm saying, so to speak, to yeah. uh, really make the change that we want to see, mm-hmm. essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but in terms of like uh, podcasts, I've been like consuming podcasts mm-hmm. the last couple of weeks and months. What um, up, Miss Douglas? I see you. Good to see you. Uniondale, you strong. Shout Uniondale. Out. One of the best ones. Randall, uh, you'll be here next week, bro. Yeah, let's go, Randall. One of the best ones is about race. Um, oh, yeah. So, po- podcast about race. That's a great podcast. Yeah. I listen to that one also. Look that up. I listen and, to um, that every week. They come out with one each week. Hi, Cousin Hugh. Peace out. And um, about race, excellent about podcast race. for y'all to listen to if y'all can get it. Mm-hmm. If y'all can get uh, it. A couple other ones that I really enjoy: uh, Vox's The Weeds. It's mm-hmm. a good podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, they talk mm-hmm. a lot about policy, and if you really want to learn, really about uh, you know kind of behind the scenes in terms of politics and those kind of things, they mm-hmm. really delve deeply into the issues and really kind of help you understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the ones I think you put me onto this was How I Built This. Yeah, Matt, I think Randall. Too. I okay. think is the one that put us both on to that. Yeah, how I built this. This is a really nice one for, especially for entrepreneurs or if you're just curious about businesses and building businesses. Uh, they kind of interview mm-hmm. different uh, business owners, entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he had Mark Cuban on one time. And mm-hmm. uh, let's see, this last one they did, uh, the, oh, founders, the of founders of Zumba. Of Zumba. That, was, that was pretty interesting. Warby Parker yeah. was on there last time. So. Mm-hmm. Um, they just kind of, in a short 30 minutes, mm-hmm. they just kind of talk about, um, you know, how they built mm-hmm. their businesses, essentially, where they came from, what was the inspiration, those kind of things. Since we're on the topic of podcast, one podcast that I found, so, so this is one of the things that I did, right? Because I said that one of the challenge, one of the reasons why we're even doing this is because, like, a lot of us 
talk around other people, right? But we don't really understand perspectives of other people. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the ways that that plays out is that what we saw in our nation this past year, um, you know, with just a sharp divide in our country. So one of the things that I decided I was going to do is I was going to listen to more right-wing politics Mm -hmm. um, simply because I was like, yo, I, I, I need to understand the viewpoint of other people who may not who, who their experiences might be different, mm-hmm. they may not think like me, and I can't just surround myself with all stuff that I just agree with. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? And only have that perspective. And that's what's happening. Right, I mean, exactly. You know, that's, on that's both sides. On both sides. So, and it makes it easy, not to interrupt, but yeah. you know, like social media and all those kind of things mm-hmm. make it easy to do that. Yeah. You, know, you kind of become encapsulated with just things that you like and yeah. perspectives that you agree with. And uh, because they filter out those mm-hmm. those things that mm-hmm. you don't like or that you don't, mm-hmm. you know, follow, and so mm-hmm. it just kind of becomes a, a cycle where you're yep. just listening to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the the actual one of this is one part. This is the first one that I'm listening to. At first, I started with like Rush Limbaugh and all that, and I was like, yo, I can't do this. <laughs> I was like, I can't yeah. do this. like, yo, because because what Rush Limbaugh and and some dudes similar to him do is they still. They don't half the time they don't even talk about policies or, or they don't acknowledge like real viewpoints half the time. They just mm-hmm. really just focus on making people afraid or just dehumanizing the other people and just like it's nothing to me that's of constructive constructive, right? But um I was listening to this one podcast on iTunes mm-hmm. called Party People. Sean right? Oh, um, I've heard about that. Yeah. Uh Sean Hannity. Uche, I see you, bruh. <laughs> oh, that's Uche. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so one of them, one of them uh, is party people, yeah, and that's yeah. a good one because I think that they they try to be balanced and they try to talk about real issues from their real perspectives and not just being like um, just just bashing you know um the liberal agenda or what have you without yeah. bringing like some real good information for you to actually consider to inform your understanding. So um, yeah. so uh, I think that's a good one for you to uh, listen to. Anything? Uh, okay, so that's podcast. That's yeah, one last up. one. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Go ahead. You said it already. I have so a bunch, they, but they one last one. One last one is uh, the Axe Files. Yo, I just love that one, man. Yo, David Axelrod. David Axelrod. <laughs> yeah, he's a beast, man. Yo, and, David uh, Axelrod. Like just great conversations. Yeah, man. man. He, he actually had the president on. Yeah, last, last week. week. Or the last. And he interviews good people. Like yeah. the people he interviews, like you really like get something from the conversation, man. It's some real mm-hmm. good stuff, man. So yeah. um, those are just some of the recommendations. Um, book recommendations. Uh, oh well, TV recommendations. Any? TV. If you haven't seen mm-hmm. Luke Cage, you should probably go see Luke Cage. I gotta watch that. It's all good, Uche. I gotta watch that. Luke Cage was good, man. Um, um, I still have to watch the 13th. Yo, I still got to watch 13th that. also. Netflix. Um, uh, a really good show or a series. I don't know. I think it's just a five-part series uh, called America Divided. Did you watch that? It was on last year. This was a what uh, series? Uh, what was it? Was it was you said it was a podcast or you said no, it was a show? No, it was a series. Yeah, oh, no, a show. I didn't see that. Yeah, America Divided, man. Real good, real good. They did five episodes. Uche said to, te- to check out Tariq Elite. So I'll check him out, man. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, thirteen. America. So. Oh, that I didn't get yeah, to see that, one. but I did want to see that. Uh, America. Yeah, man. I mean, they talked about uh, the gun violence in uh-huh. Chicago. They talked about mass incarceration. Mm-hmm. Talked about um, uh, what's it called? Um, housing discrimination mm-hmm. in New York City, mm-hmm. um, and just the education. Some of the education issues mm-hmm. down in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was really good, man. Immigration. Okay. So yeah. we got America Divided. Um, it's real, real good stuff. What What else would you suggest? Oh, a, a book that I would suggest to y'all, um, and this is more just on technological stuff, but you let me borrow the book, is the one on Elon Musk, Oof. right? The, it, it, um, this one dude, uh, what's the name? Ashley, Ashley Vance, A-S-H-L-E-E Vance. He did a biography on, on Elon Musk, and it's dope, like, uh, there's certain things that we haven't been paying attention to, right? So Elon, we're used to seeing like NASA sending spaceships up uh, into um, like space or what have you. But Elon Musk, one, is the first person to take, to kind of be a part of starting three separate companies and helping take three different companies to being worth a billion dollars or more. 
right? And one of the companies is Tesla. So y'all have seen the Tesla vehicles um, mm -hmm. out there. So he is one of the brains behind Tesla. Yeah. He's also one of the brains behind PayPal. Y'all all have used PayPal before. And he's also um, the brains behind SpaceX, which is, ha is, the, um, is basically like your first... It's not the first. It's the first successful, I would say, private, yeah, privately owned, kind of privately owned space, space program, company, yeah. space program, right? So we're used to NASA mm -hmm. and the Department of Justice or what have you. But then this guy, Elon Musk, comes in and he has this idea. He's like, yo, I want to get people over out to Mars. And so he's been doing all these things to yeah, do things goal, like, man. I think it used to cost like 180 something million dollar per rocket. And Elon Musk has now developed rockets for $60 million or less with plans to further reduce it. Oh, and he's also right now working on tiles for your roof that look just like regular tiles, even better. But they're all really solar panels. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Um, and that's something that he's getting off the solar ground. So just, just to see how he's made all these happen and to see the bad also, right? Because a lot of people don't like him because he, his attitude seems to be a little funky. Mm. But <laughs> the work that he does, and I love it because... One thing that you see that stands out is that he does the work for the sake of the work. He, even though he's worth mad dough now, he's never done it for the money. He's never done it to show off. He's never done it because he wants to go out there and like buy ridiculous things. He's all about mm -hmm. the work because he wants to provide real value to the society. And yeah. so much to the point where he, put, he had made millions and he put his own money up in order to make these things happen to the point of, almost going broke because of it but he was yeah. willing to do that because he's like yo i'm gonna invest in it i'm not waiting for anybody else to invest in this for me mm -hmm. so yeah which is asking what are these recommendations for oh these these are just recommendations um and i guess this will be the last thing and then we'll get ready to head out man but um these are just recommendations as we go into 2017 these are just things that will help you with food for thought so especially with the political climate and the, the governmental climate some of the things that we were recommending um are really to um, help give other perspectives and to help mm -hmm. give fuller perspective um, as far as things that are going on politically so that we can understand, so that we can make good decisions as far as on a political front or so we can at least understand what's happening so that we can um, make our voices heard as much as is possible yeah. um, as it's individuals and aware. hopefully collective. Yeah, just, just to be woke, as they say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then some of the other ones are just to kind of just... Um, broaden our horizons, man. You know, maybe there's a young cat out there who's thinking of like, well, what industry can I go into? And, yo, maybe they should go into, <clears throat> and maybe they should read about engineering and see. I was just watching this joint the other day with these dudes who created these jetpacks, um, you know, where they literally jump out the air and they're flying, like with the um, these jetpack joint, like, like it's crazy, and I'm like, yo, this is like some superhero. You know what they look like? <laughs> they look like what's my man, the black dude on um the Avengers. Uh, oh yeah, he used to play. He played Papa Doc or something like that on Eight Mile. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Right, and he he was like the enough. flying uh, superhero on Avengers Part Two, and and I think um yeah, whatever you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, but, he was uh, in Captain America. Yeah, Captain America. So um they've like literally created that, and you can go see it. Uh, what's the name of it? It's called, it's something in Dubai. Look up Dubai Flyers, guys that fly jetpacks in Dubai, something like that, man. Mm. So, anyway, man, listen, <laughs> y'all go check out the Bridge Nation on, um, on Facebook. Um, I think I actually have, I might have the, in the top of my Instagram, there might be a link to it, I think. Um, but check that out, like it, man. We're going to try to keep the discussions going. We're going to start writing our own articles and stuff like that also, just based on different current events. Um, now nah, Uche, they weren't hovering over water. Literally, they go, they take a plane or a helicopter into the air and jump out, and then they have these jetpacks that allow them to fly, like as if they were human birds, so to speak. Like literally, <sighs> this small jetpack, two two jets, two mini like jets, uh, jet engines on each side of the wings. And they fire them things up, and they're, like, doing flips and all kinds of stuff in the air and literally flying wow. in the air, yo. Like, it's crazy. So, um... Anthony Mackie, that's the name. Oh, An yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony yeah. Mackie. Um, that's the dude from um, Avengers, so... Yeah. Um, no, not like the... Well, yeah, like the movie The Rocketeer. Um, hold on, because I'm, I'm going to just pull it up for you real quick, just so you can know. Go to YouTube real quick, right? And type in 
Dubai flyers or something like that. Yeah, soul fly, right? So, so if you go to YouTube, turn turn the computer around just so that I don't know if they're gonna be able to see. It might bring up a glare, right? Um, nah, it's gonna bring up a glare. So look, look at this, y'all. Just do this. If you type in Jetman as one word, J E T M A N, and then the next word is Dubai, D U B A I. Yeah, right, right. And the first thing that comes, oh yeah, Mike, yeah. The first thing that comes up, it, it'll say like Young Feathers 4K or something like that. Watch that joint. Like, it's crazy. But I, the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I, I really think that some of us would have, there are certain things that we could have or certain fields that we could have gone into or just brought our creativity to that we just didn't even realize were possibilities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we want to just be avenues also that, that, um, that kind of like show and express like, yo, what else is out there? So that somebody that's watching on, I'd be like, yo, I would be interested in going into a career of that or just sitting at home and creating my own whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. yeah. man, because it's, it's some dope stuff happening out there, y'all. Like, yeah. some dope stuff. I want to start getting into VR and seeing like...